1957, Governor Goodwin Knight signed legislation creating the Placer County Water Agency. This effectively gave control of the county's water resources to the people of Placer County. The first people to put Placer County's water to beneficial use were the Native Americans. In the 1800s, 49ers used the water to pan for gold. Soon they began digging ditches and building flumes in an effort to direct water to gold-bearing soils. Later, hydraulic miners used water cannons to shoot water into mountainsides to wash out the gold. By the 1860s, the waterworks created for gold mining were being used for irrigating orchards of plums, pears, peaches, and apples. By the early 20th century, the growing demand for water and electrical power created a struggle among powerful political interests to control California's rivers. Cities from the San Francisco Bay Area, for example, laid claim to the Tuolumne and Mokulumne rivers. Dams, power plants, pipelines, and canals were built to capture the mountain resources and deliver them to consumers far away. By the 1930s, plans were being made to transport water hundreds of miles from Northern California to the South. In the 1940s, House Representative Claire Engel encouraged mountain counties to preserve their water rights. Placer County's Board of Supervisors heeded the advice, and in 1948, passed a resolution that authorized the Upper American River Project. In the State Assembly, Francis Lindsay of Loomis took up the cause of local water rights. I believe we should develop our own water without the so-called help of the federal government. I challenge anyone to prove to me that the local people of the foothills are incapable of developing their own water. Lindsay pushed for legislation in the State Assembly to create the Placer County Water Agency. On July 3, 1957, Governor Knight signed it into law. The people of Placer County now had the authority to develop their own water. Bold engineering plans were drawn up for the Water Agency by McCreary Koretsky engineers. They designed a system of dams, tunnels, and power plants to harness the waters of the Rubicon River and the Middle Fork of the American River that flow within the county. The system would store 350,000 acre-feet of water and produce valuable power for sale on California's electrical grid. The price tag for the project was estimated to be around $132 million. But before work could begin, the project would need the approval of Placer County voters. In order to fund the agency's Middle Fork project, a $140 million bond issue would be put before Placer County voters. The plan was to sell electrical power to pay off the bonds over the next 50 years. There would be no taxes to fund the project and no financial assistance from the state or federal sources. But first, voters needed to be sold on the idea. Ed Tiedemann, an assistant county executive, was one among many in Placer County working to inform voters about the bond issue. I did a lot of work on the campaign. Uh, technically, I was working for the county and, you know, technically uh, public agencies can't be advocates on elections, uh, so technically I wasn't advocating. <coughs> but. I did a lot of work, uh, so-called educational work. Advocates of the Middle Fork Project did a good job of educating voters. On June 20th, 1961, the measure passed by a whopping 24 to 1 margin. In the wake of the election, an agreement was reached with Pacific Gas and Electric to buy power from the agency over the next 50 years. Serious obstacles were overcome to secure permission and obtain licenses from the Federal Power Commission, Department of the Interior, and the Bureau of Reclamation. A consortium of six large construction companies, calling themselves the American River Constructors, agreed to take on the difficult construction job. Negotiations began with Lloyds of London to ensure compensation to PG&E in case a drought hindered the generation of electrical power. 
things were falling into place. Then suddenly, it all began to unravel. Engineering plans for the project called for the use of German and Japanese-made turbines and generators, but a state law called the Buy American Act forbade their use. Although an international trade agreement clearly superseded the state's Buy American Act, potential lawsuits could tie up the project for years. Contracts would expire. Agreements would be broken. The Middle Fork project would grind to a halt. Paul Lenardi, assemblyman from Roseville, saw a way around such lawsuits by authorizing legislation amending the state law. Along with State Senator Ron Cameron, they carried legislation to amend the Buy American Act. But the legislation failed in the assembly by a wide margin. Lenardi kept up his attempts to amend the law. He worked out arrangements with lawmakers in Sacramento to turn the vote around. On a second vote, the amendment to the Buy American Act passed the legislature. But it was late in the afternoon and the governor had left the Capitol. The legislation required his signature. Meanwhile, at the Placer County Courthouse in Auburn, the big day, May 2nd, 1963, had arrived, but there was a long delay in the planned events. Only a few knew why. As I remember the day the agency had, uh, you may have seen pictures, of uh, things set up on the lawn of the courthouse. They were going to have this big signing ceremony. And the two things were going on. Lenardi <coughs> was trying to get his bill through in time. And then people for the agency in London were trying to get Lloyds of London to issue this insurance. In Sacramento, Lenardi found Governor Brown at the governor's mansion and got the required signature. He used the governor's phone to call the courthouse with the news. Later, a call was received from Lloyds of London with an OK to issue the dry year insurance. And they had this signing ceremony, and ARC, American River Constructor, signed the contract. PG&E signed the contract. The agency signed it. And everything was cool. The project charged ahead with the rapid construction of roads, dams, tunnels, and powerhouses. Then, in December of 1964, disaster struck. <coughs> so, it didn't rain early all through December. Then one day it started to rain, and everybody was happy. And it rained the second day, and they were even more happy. And then it rained about the third and fourth day, and it's raining too much. <coughs> and they had this sort of rain or flood of record up there, so much so they had this hellhole dam half built and this water came down and washed it out. But with the next construction season, work began again. The project was completed on schedule in 1967. Today, the Middle Fork project produces 1 billion kilowatt hours of hydroelectric power per year. It provides water to farms and drinking water for well over 150,000 people. 